Audio Jungle. Audio Jungle. Audio Jungle. Hundreds of Dutch protesters had a water cannon turned on them by police after they objected to the partial return of lockdown in the Netherlands as COVID cases continue to soar. Dutch police blasted a group of around 200 people in the Age with water in a bid to disperse demonstrators who had been throwing stones and fireworks in protest on Friday evening. Prime Minister Mark Rutte, 54, was giving a press briefing to the media when protesters clashed with riot police and mounted officers outside the Justice and Security Ministry in the Dutch city. In the clip, dozens of protesters can be seen sitting on the ground where they brace for impact as police turned the water cannons on them. As they turn their backs and shield one another from the barrage, officers spray them again. Later that evening, after flares, projectiles and bicycles were thrown at police, officers were seen hitting fleeing demonstrators with batons as what started as a peaceful protest descended into chaos. Although that remained low, the Netherlands recorded their highest ever daily infection count positive COVID cases on Friday as medics warned hospitals were being put on the Ruge pressure amid a record-breaking surge of infections. Preferring to the unpleasant return of lockdown measures from this Saturday, Ruth said restrictions that the Dutch people had thought had ended for good were being reimposed for three weeks. Meanwhile, COVID cases have tumbled in the UCA over the past month, leading to prominent experts including Professor Lockdown Neil Ferguson to share their optimism that the UCA can avoid a return of Netherlands style lockdown restrictions this winter. Infections have trended downwards since October 24, with independent tracking studies finding a 16% weekly decline last week. Daily cases rose week on week for the second day in a row today, up by a quarter on last week to 38,351. Both experts are hopeful this is a temporary effect of children returning to school after half term. Hospital admissions for the virus have decreased for nearly a week straight, and are projected to fall even further in coming weeks. Another 145 coronavirus deaths were also registered on Friday in a 25% decrease compared to the toll last week. Speaking on BBC Today program, Professor Ferguson said, hey, we might see slow increases as we did in October. I think it is unlikely we will get anything close to what we had last year, that catastrophic winter wave. The professor at Imperial College London told BBC Radio 4 Today program, we've had two or three weeks of the cleaning cases and admission to hospitals, that may be petering out, it is too early to say. There is a hint of an uptick in the last few days. But we are in quite a different situation from those European countries you are talking about, the Netherlands, Germany. We've had very high case numbers, between 30.000 and 50.000 a day, really for the last four months, since the beginning of Juli. That has obviously had some downsides. It has also paradoxically had an upside of boosting the immunity of the population compared with countries like Germany, the Netherlands and France, which have had much lower case numbers and are only now seeing an uptick. Any regulations mean bars and restaurants will now be forced to shut at 8 de la noche, major sporting events will remain behind closed doors and social distancing is to be reimposed immediately. Supermarkets and non-essential retailers will also close earlier and social distancing measures will be reimposed. The government recommended that no more than four visitors be received at home, effective immediately. Cafes and nightclubs will have to close at 8 de la noche from Saturday. A group of around 200 anti-lockdown protesters gathered outside the government building in the Age where Ruth was speaking. Several people were detained for setting off fireworks and throwing objects at the police. Armed with placards, whistles and megaphones, protesters initially began with a peaceful demonstration but since eventually turned to chaos as bicycles, projectiles and road signs were being thrown and flares let off. Meanwhile, similar action was taken in Austria on Friday evening after Chancellor Alexander Schellenberg announced plans to impose a lockdown measures on unvaccinated members of the population. In Linz, Austria's third largest city, hundreds of protesters lined the streets to rage at the prospective measures which would come into force from Sunday. 20% of intensive care beds are being used by COVID patients in the country, according to Reuters. And in Milan, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., the nephew of former U.S. President John F. Kennedy, was pictured greeting anti-vaxxers and addressing a crowd of protesters as demonstrations against COVID hubs continue in the Italian city. 
The Dutch government has also explored ways to restrict access to indoor venues for people who have not been vaccinated, a politically sensitive measure that would require parliamentary approval. Tonight we are bringing a very unpleasant message with very unpleasant and far-reaching measures, Ruth said in a televised address on Friday evening. The virus is everywhere and needs to be combated everywhere. Meanwhile, Professor Lockdown Neil Ferguson has said that a Netherlands-style lockdown is unlikely in Britain despite an optic in COVID cases in the UK. The member of the Scientific Advisory Group for Emergencies, SAGE, said Britain's situation is different from other European nations as the wave of infections seems to be petering out. On Friday, Boris Johnson warned of gathering storm clouds over Europe and used the continent's swearing epidemic as a warning of what's to come if Britons don't get their booster vaccines. I've got to be absolutely frank with people, we've been here before, and we remember what happens when a wave starts rolling in, Mr. Johnson said during a visit to a pharmacy in South London. The PM, who is currently embroiled in a Tory slice row, warned that Britain's fate this winter hinges on how many people get their boosters. What I'm saying today is the urgency of getting that booster hub is more evident than ever, he said. If you can get it, it's a great thing, the levels of protection it gives you are terrific and so over 50s, who we're calling forward, should come and get it. But the other, what I'm also saying is that if we don't do it fast enough, we can see the potential risks to the state of the pandemic in what's happening in other parts of Europe. Ruth's latest move is a rapid escalation for the country after it reintroduced the use of face coverings as mandatory in public places including gyms, museums and hospitality venues. It comes as the Dutch government faced to have pressure over the controversial decision to impose a corona pass, which meant proof of a COVID-19 vaccination or recent negative coronavirus test was required for entry. More than 40% of bar and restaurant owners said they do not plan on asking customers to show their corona pass, as they fear the move is a political tool that will ultimately damage the hospitality sector's long-term recovery. Coronavirus infections in the Netherlands have been rising for a month after most social distancing measures were scrapped in late September, and reached their highest level since Juli in the past week. The new measures are meant to contain a surge in COVID-19 cases that is straining hospitals across the country. New infections topped 16,000 for the second day in a row on Friday, beating the previous record of just under 13,000 confirmed cases in a day set in December last year. Ruth instructed people to work from home whenever possible, and said no spectators would be allowed in the coming weeks to attend sporting events, including the Dutch soccer team's World Cup qualifier against Norway on Tuesday. Schools, theatres and cinemas will remain open. Friday's announcement marked a dramatic change of policy for the Dutch government, which until last month had thought that a relatively high vaccination rate would allow it to further its measures towards the end of the year. Nearly 85% of the adult Dutch population has been fully vaccinated. Since the start of the pandemic, the Netherlands has recorded 2.27 million COVID-19 cases and 18.695 related deaths. Less than two weeks ago, the Dutch Health Council advised the government to begin giving COVID-19 booster shots to everybody ahead 60 and over, along with residents of nursing homes. To get ahead of an increase in serious illness, the council advises the health minister to start offering boosters now, the expert said. Meanwhile, the government has already begun giving booster shots to people with severely compromised immune systems. Other European countries already have begun giving booster shots. France started giving boosters to people over the age of 65 two months ago.